Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So previously I've made a tutorial talking about the procedural cross tiering effect within geometry nodes. It's a kind of very simple effect, but it gives a very interesting result. Today we are going to move a little bit further talking about a demonstration of visual effects I've made previously. So let's just start. As the last time I'm going to use the presets so you can download them for free from the link in the description. Actually, last time it was not necessary to use the presets, but uh, this time, since there are so many different variations, then we are definitely going to do that. Uh, so let's create a UV sphere. Uh, it can be whatever things, it does not really matter. Uh, something like that. Okay, this will be just fine. Okay, so I have a big sphere and a small sphere. Uh, we are going to do the basically the same setup as the last time. We subdivide and take a delete geometry. I'm also going to take a separate smooth for it uh, to be better looking. Uh, last time, we are using a noise 3D, which is basically just a noise texture, and the flow to compare to determine which area to be deleted by this delete geometry. This time, we're going to use something different, basically any kind of fault that, that you can imagine. So. In this case, I'm going to take a uh, proximity fold, which is basically using the proximity node. And we can take a float compare because this is not a noise, so it does not really matter exactly which kind of value you're comparing to. Maybe uh, greater than greater than zero will just be fine. And let's lock this interface. If I take this sphere close to the area, then there is some part of being deleted. We're going to make it more kind of organic looking. So let's take a smooth modifier and increase the repeats, maybe increase the factor to one. And we will see more interesting effects later with this modifier. Now the major issue that we are having is that we have the effect, but it's just too organized to be interesting. So we need to add some noise on this evaluation of how geometry is going to be deleted. So there are two ways. One is you use vector mass to add on to the original geometry, so original position. Or another way is you mix uh, the you mix the noise with original position. So either way will just work. So in this case, for example, you take noise 3D and take the colors, positions, vectors, and you may potentially increase the scale. You may increase the frequency. Then it becomes something like this. So this is one way to do that. I'm not saying I'm going to do this. And also you can add a solidify modifier. So this is really just uh, one way of doing that. Okay. Another method is you mix with noise, basically doing the same process. Uh, but you have to change that to linear light. There is a specific reason because of how this formula is being constructed. Uh, that's why there is actually a preset which is called a vector noise. There are pros and cons into each of the methods. There is no definitive answer about what you need to do exactly. But uh, you can play around with this kind of value. Uh, you can obviously see that uh, for this vector noise method, the mix method, which you cannot really control as much as what you will see within this noise 3D because there is no scale effect. Uh, but uh, it does not mean that we cannot make it more interesting with this vector noise. It's very important to notice that uh, when we are manipulating this position, this is position essentially comes from the geometry. So if we deform the geometry in the previous step, then this position will be changed as well. Here, I'm going to take a set of position node to do a repulsion effect, which is just basically to add some taste onto this kind of animation. And the repulsion effect, as I have explained in the repulsion MoGraph tutorial, is basically a position subtract with whatever things that you potentially have. Uh, actually, let's set that to position uh, offset. And we need to get the location of our small sphere. Yes, 
the small sphere and take that location. So now we can see the repulsion effects if my sphere is moved close to the object, then something is moving. Okay. Uh, but this movement is kind of too exaggerated. It's kind of the effect is being exerted on the whole thing. So we need to make a fourth to determine which part is being affected exactly. And this fourth, we already have that, which is the proximity fourth. Take that to scale proximity fourth into it. Okay, so now there is a kind of repulsion effect. We can uh, use a math to multiply with this effect. So let's so let's we increase the amplitude. So that, now you can actually see the effect. And because we added this displacement onto the position using this kind of alternative way, so the evaluation also becomes kind of interesting. And the rest is all about the parameters. For example, you may want to decrease this frequency so that they more like kind of integrate it and uh, decrease the amplitude a little bit uh, and so on and so forth. It, there is kind of a lot of tweaking but you get a kind of idea. Okay. Uh, another important thing is you can change the scale offset. So determining the fourth, usually we're using the empty but now we are not using the empty, we're using an object which is, has a definitive size. So you either scale the size of your object or you can use this offset. Okay, so these are all the ways that you can potentially manipulate the size of your fold. And uh, probably that's it. You can definitely add more details on the top of this setup. For example, I do not like a perfect UV sphere at the most beginning. So maybe I want to take a normal displacement and let's take a noise 3D, which is basically a noise texture so that it becomes more kind of organic whatever stuff. If you want to move the noise texture while you're moving your smaller sphere, then you just select your sphere. Or you can still use the object info, position, vector mass, plug that to vector, a custom vector. It's still the same. Okay, something like there are so many ways to play around. Another thing I forgot to mention is that the importance of this distortion. So you can play around all these parameters, not only the frequency, but also the distortion, roughness, and the source force. There are tons of ways that you can play around so that it makes kind of good looking. Okay, up to now, whatever we have talked about is just uh, a one variation of this possible animation. Okay, there's other variation as I've explained that Last time we used the noise 3D, that function as a threshold. This time we're using proximity fourth, but there is another fourth which is directional fourth. There is obviously more fourth that I provided, but uh, I think most commonly you will probably want to just use proximity fourth and the directional fourth in this particular case. So here let's try to select our small sphere and use the directional fourth. And you can see it's the effect. It's basically really just a directional fourth. Let's plug the noise into the place. And it looks like this very horrible, <laughs> nothing interesting. Um, it's kind of very weird. Okay. But who knows, maybe you just tweak some settings and you finally find a result that you really like, even with directional fourth. Uh, even for this proximity fold, currently it looks kind of a little bit kind of weird because the repulsion is not very obvious. So you either increase the repulsion level or what you can also do in such kind of case is to increase the scale. Or you can even use two different proximity folds uh, and you can change the scale offset so that you can see the effect more nicely. And you can play or tweak around the frequency subdivision, add some thresholds to all this kind of whatever, whatever stuff. Uh, just to try to jump out of the box. It's not really saying, oh, you only need one proximity fold or you only need one directional fold. 
you can use a two proximity for and you can add more and more stuff uh, for your needs. There is a no definitive answer to polish this entire animation. There is also one thing that I do not really like in this particular case is that if I were to make an animation, I want to eliminate this sphere completely as I'm passing through. Okay, so I like these parts of animation, but I do not like this part of recovery. So I need to combine these two forms together, the proximity form and the directional form. Okay, how am I supposed to do? This is a very interesting fact. If you really think about the proximity form, it's basically just a sphere. That's why there is no elimination because it's not a, the big sphere is no longer in the area of our fourth sphere. However, directional fourth always cover one side of our object. So if we are going to draw a mask or combine these two fourth together, then I'm going to eliminate any part which is not overlapped by these two plates. So I'm going to change that to not equal and plug the directional fourth into B. And we can also use this directional offset so that to move our directional fourth a little bit backwards. And if I move that to negative side, then you can actually see the directional fourth is exerting the effects on our sphere. So this is how it kind of works in such a scenario. And if you really combine them a little bit too closely, then it gives this kind of result. Actually, it just gave me another new idea of making this interesting animation, but that's another story. So you can try to play around all these kind of value settings, whatever stuff, okay? One thing here I want to mention at last is about materials. Okay. So because these are geometry created within geometry node tree, so I need to set material node to actually get the material. So add the material, set material. Another thing I want to transport the color to shader. So in this case, usually you need to transport the color of your fourth. In this case, we do have one, two, three, three, four. You can transfer whatever you want, but the more likely and the more preferably you transfer the first fourth, which is used to displace, not to use to delete. Because if you delete, you delete, you do not see the fourth anymore. <laughs> That's the kind of idea. So it goes to shaders and we need to take the attribute. And the attribute is, we can name that attribute as a C, which stands for color. You can name it whatever you want, it does not really matter. And you can see this kind of whitish parts, right? So maybe you can increase these whitish parts using the color ramp so that you intensify it. And now you can use you can directly change the color here, but I personally prefer mix RGB if you're only talking about the black and white. So here, let's take a orange color. The rest becomes dark. And we can plug that to emission shader. So finally, we get something like this. We can turn on the balloon and turn on the strands. So finally like this kind of being eliminated. Uh, something like that. So this is kind of idea. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.